Chemistry is a very colorful subject. Let's look at some of the colors in chemistry. We're going to start off with colors of salts. Let's say we have a salt solution and the color of the salt solution is blue. Then the ion that is present in the salt solution is a copper 2 plus ion. If the color of the salt solution is brown, then the ion that is contributing to this color is the iron 3 plus ion. If the color of the solution is green, then there are a few possibilities. One of it is the iron 2 ion, Fe2 plus. We also have the nickel ion, Ni2 plus. And the chromium ion, chromium 3 ion, Cr3 plus. As you can see so far, it is actually the transition metals that contribute the color of a salt solution. So it would be the cations that are responsible for the color of the salt solution. Let's look at what if the salt is in a solid state. If the color of a salt in a solid state is blue color and it dissolves to form a blue color solution, then there are two possible salts. One is copper 2 nitrate, CuNO32, copper 2 sulfate. CuSO4. This is probably the most common colored chemical that you come across in secondary school. If we had a green color salt, there are many possibilities. First, if the salt manages to dissolve in water to form a blue color solution, remember from earlier, a blue color solution would indicate the presence of Cu2 plus ion. Therefore, if it is green in the solid state but forms a blue solution, the salt is copper 2 chloride. CuCl2. If a green salt in the solid state dissolves to form a green color solution, then, as we saw earlier, a green color solution would indicate the presence of iron 2 ion, Fe2. If we have a green color salt that is insoluble in water, then the salt is copper 2 carbonate, CuCO2. If we have a brown salt in the solid state, which also dissolves to form a brown color solution, then, as we saw earlier, a brown color solution would indicate the presence of iron 3 ion, Fe3+. And so this would simply indicate that it is a salt containing Fe3 plus ion. A common confusion that I find when it comes to colors of salts is iron 2 and iron 3. To help my students not get mixed up between the two, I have a simple way to remember this. Let's start with the color green. The confusion is often between which is green and which is brown. If we look at the word green, you have two E's. This is the only word with two of the same letter. So since you have two E's, this is the color of Fe2 plus ion in solution. And if you look at the word brown, the W, only brown contains the word W. When you rotate W 90 degrees, you get 3. And so, brown color would be Fe3 plus ion. And this is how you distinguish between ion 2 plus and ion 3 plus. Next, let's look at the colors of residues after thermal decomposition. This is the process of heating a salt until it decomposes. If we have a black residue after the thermal decomposition of a salt, then it indicates the presence of copper 2 oxide, CuO, which means the original salt before decomposition would have contained Cu2 plus ions. If a brown residue was formed, then the original salt would have contained Fe3 plus ions. So you can see all the brown colors here are linked to Fe3 plus. And this is a special case. If the residue after heating, while it was still hot, was yellow, and while it's cool, it became white, this indicates that this is zinc oxide, which means the original salt would have contained zinc ion, Zn2. And if the residue is brown when hot, but yellow when cool, this indicates that it is lead 2 oxide, PbO which means the original salt would have contained Pb2 plus ions. Now let's look at the colors in the cation test. In the cation test, we have three colors of precipitate form. 
when you add a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution, there's a possibility of getting three colored precipitates. That is the blue, green and brown precipitates. So again, blue precipitate here would indicate the presence of C2 plus ion. Green would indicate the presence of iron 2 plus and brown iron 3 plus. Under the cation test as well, we could use ammonia solution. And if we add a few drops of ammonia solution, we would get the same colored precipitates. However, if we add ammonia solution until excess, something else happens. We will get a dark blue solution when it is copper to ion present. After we perform this cation test, we also have the confirmatory test. We have different colors in the confirmatory test as well. For the ammonium ion, NH4+, if you add a few drops of Nestle reagent, a brown precipitate would form. For the iron 2 plus ion, we add a few drops of potassium hexacyanoferrate 3 solution. If iron 2 plus ions are present in the solution, then a dark blue precipitate is formed. For iron 3 plus ions, we have two confirmatory tests. First, we can add a few drops of potassium hexacyanoferrate 2 solution. The result is the same. If iron 3 ions are present, a dark blue precipitate will form. But for iron 3 ions, we can use another solution and that is potassium thiocyanate solution. In this case, we don't get a precipitate. However, a blood red solution is formed. For the lead 2 ion, if we add a few drops of potassium iodide solution, a yellow precipitate is formed. Nothing would happen if it was an aluminium ion, so we're going to ignore that. Besides the topic of salts, we also have colors emerging in the topic of elements of group 1 of the periodic table of elements. When the elements of group 1 either burn in excess oxygen or they react with halogens, the color of the flame is different depending on the metal that is burnt. Lithium burns with a red color, sodium burns with a yellow color, whereas potassium burns with a lilac color. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Really does help a lot with the channel. Thank you very much for doing that. If you enjoy videos like this, do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one a week. See you guys in the next video.